Hi, everybody. So we're on our way up to, the, to Eli, uh, Eli's to get the new winter shoes on these two horses. This morning, Andy went out and took the blacks out and actually skidded a couple more hitches this morning. It was freezing rain this morning, so we didn't work out very long, and I was able to get some of the logs cut up on my landing and piled up. So we're going to head up there now, and uh, I've got a bunch of questions for Eli, if he's willing to answer them. And uh, yeah, we'll get going. Uh, Andy, actually, uh, just grab the other rope, which is right there, and put it right on Lady, and just come on out with, with Lady. Hey, how about it? I watered them before lunch, so I'd, they're probably not thirsty. Uh, so I'm taking Andy up with me because he's actually been kind of apprenticing with Eli to teach him more about shoeing. He's done quite a lot of shoeing on his own, especially on the driving horses, but the big horses he has not done too much. So he's going to watch and help Eli as Eli puts the shoes on my horses. So we'll see you up there. Okay, so I've gotten over here to, to Eli's and I dropped the horses off and actually we're in the um, harness shop right now because we decided to let Andy um, pull the shoes off Bill and get the feet prepared and then we'll go back and then Eli will actually do a uh, good share of the work as far as putting these new shoes on. But we're in the sh his, his shop right now and so this is a nice warm place so we decided we'd kind of have a question and answer type of a thing here in the warm building instead of talking so much outside. Seen anything you, you could answer? Oh, there's a couple I could probably answer on there. No. I should've brought my glasses. I can't, I don't know if I can read it. <laughs> <laughs> see if they're the right, the right they're ones. Just right, that's what I have. They work, okay. Okay, so I'd asked everybody about some specific questions and I got a whole page of them here and uh, we'll, we'll probably do uh, a portion of them anyways. And, uh, but I, I got down here and I realized I didn't have my glasses and luckily Eli had a pair of dollar store glasses. You don't you act to use these, do you? <laughs> That'll keep my secret. Because <laughs> you're, you're pretty bit younger than I am. No, I don't use them a lot. But if I'm stitching like the black bioplastic, oh, yeah. because everything's just like a glare, I, that does help. You do use them once in a yeah, while. Yeah, I do use them yeah. once in a while. Okay. Uh, so here's a uh, uh, question. Okay, so do the do you drive the nails through and outside the top of the hoof? And I see you use nippers to trim what appears to be exposed nail point and then hammer them and file them down. Why don't you just uh, give a real quick talk that, about that? Yeah. Uh, yes, I do drive them through the hoof and then clip the ends off, and then I've got a tool where it'll clinch it down, hammer it down, and then you know take the rough edges off. Yeah. Okay. You definitely want to make sure the nail's coming out. Yes. Because yeah. it's too dangerous to leave it in. You don't know which way it's actually turned. Sometimes they can turn in and make your horse lame. But yeah, you want to see the nail exposed. Right. Okay. And maybe we'll get to see that here in a few minutes also. Okay. Um, where do you get your, all your leather stuff? Uh, this is from Bob from Nevada. Hi, Bob. Um, so where do you buy your... All my leather goods come from Weaver Leather out of Montauk, Ohio. Okay. Uh, I get some from Byler's Manufacturing, but for the most part, Weaver Leather is where I, where I get my leather. And a lot of hardware too. They're a pretty good company to deal with. Here. I got, yeah, I got some over here. Oh, that's 
scattered about. Let me see here. Um, <laughs> here's an interesting one. Uh, what? What's the best metal to make horseshoes, and are there horseshoes out there made of wood? <laughs> I've never seen any, have you? <laughs> no, never have I. I suppose it's possible. Yeah. And as far as the best metal, I don't, I don't know because I just buy all my shoes. Right. So. Right. Uh, I'm assuming you don't want a hard, hard metal because you're gonna have a problem getting holes punched in. Right. And pliable to bend back and forth. Right. Right. Okay. Here's a question uh, that Eli can answer. Um, somebody asked, uh, at what age do will I, uh, will Duke and Earl have their first pair of shoes? Well, he's not the one that's going to say when they have their first pair of shoes. I've got to decide that myself, and then, and then he would do it. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, I really have to make that decision myself. Um, so, uh, what? Where do you buy your, um, your shoes and uh, and your? Shoeing supplies. Shoeing supplies and shoes, those come from uh, Swartz Farrier out of Indiana, okay. Bern, Indiana. Okay. For the most part, I mean, I get some from uh, Master Farriers out of uh, Bursa, Minnesota. But okay. For the most part, the shoes come from Swartz. And I'll show you a close up of the shoes when we get up to the, where the, sh where the shoe is going on. Um, this is from Chris. Uh, ask Eli what advice for what type of feed and how to treat a hoof with bad horn material i'm not exactly sure what he means by bad horn material horn Maybe material i'm gonna assume that is on the toe part and the inside of his hoof um, how to exactly answer that question i really don't know that'd be like a vet vet would have to okay, answer more that of a vet question yeah, yeah. All right, um, uh, I haven't been working horses, but I do do trail rides in New England. This is another comment. Uh, ask if he knows how to ask for to explain why the pad in between keeps the snow off. Um, be interested in hear that. So the snow pads. The, the snow pads, they have, uh, maybe have a pad here, maybe we can show it later, but that bubble under on that pad is to uh, you get any snow that bubble will work like a almost like a piston it goes up when pressure gets on it and then you get snow that pops back that's out right so that's the the object of putting that snowball pad on there so no snow packs on there and it's a lot safer okay what way. about the difference between the snow pad and the flat pad and does the flat pad do anything in snow the flat pad helps but it doesn't do like the snow pad okay it does help but they're not as good as the snow pad okay here's another question about pads um uh well i saw it somewhere when you do do snow pads do you put something in between so that the hoof doesn't dry out yes they put oakum okay like a hoof packing uh get it from the same supplier and i pack that in between there and so no moisture nothing can get in there and that's packed with like pine tar so it actually softens your hoof up and helps make a better healthier hoof too and we've noticed over the years too that that oakum and that pine tar will almost improve the hoof itself when we take that off mm -hmm. it's so it's nice compared to not having it on yeah it is yeah that's a great thing um here's a question from chris from germany like i said we got questions from all over the world um no i take that back we've already asked that question he was he asked about the the how to treat the hoof if they have problems with the horn material okay now someone's asked about comment on how much he charges to do shoeing and i didn't i have never answered that question and i'm not going to today but uh i know that there's such a huge range of prices when it comes to shoeing horses so i could tell you a price but in your area it would be totally different so you know if you do have a need to to shoe your horses you need to find a, a farrier that's close by that you can trust and has a good reputation to do the job and then you'll have to ask him what his charges are so it won't do you any good to know what i'm paying and this is guy is kind of just answering a whole bunch of questions about shoeing it's an actual shoer this guy used to shoe okay so anyways that's that's a good share of the the 
the questions. Um, we're not going to answer them all because we're going to leave some, some uh, questions and thoughts for some other videos. But uh, we'll go up and see how Andy's coming along and uh, we'll continue on this shoeing process for a little while and then I'm going to leave the horses here and go back home and get some work done. So here's Bill waiting patiently to get his shoes done. And Andy's in here pulling shoes. Last year, he actually did all of his shoeing in the building we just came out of that is now his harness shop. And that was so nice because he had the heat right in there and it was a real pleasant place for him to be working. And now he has to work out here in the cold. Can I tape in this other room? And uh, he does have this room in here that he has a little stove in. And this is where he does all of his driving horses for the Amish. There's a lot of driving horses around that need to be, need shoes on. So this is where he does that. And he actually has some of his supplies here. Look at the size of those shoes. I don't know what size horse that would be for, but it's pretty darn small. And here is his forge that he uses. And over here is more shoe supplies. Actually, Eli, I could just take these in and explain it myself. Yeah. And uh, if I have any questions, I'll holler to you. That way, that way you don't have to worry about being in it. The bar shoe or the... This is the bar shoe. Yeah. Okay, so Andy and, and uh, Eli are out shoeing right now, and, and uh, I just wanted to come in and show you some close-ups of a couple things. Um, like I've said on other videos, I try to be very careful not to show their faces because they, they really don't want that. So whenever I can just do it myself, it works better. So anyways, this is the snow pad, and it's this bubble right here that works to kick the snow off. So it's gonna be like this. So when they step, that bubble will actually go down. And it's pretty tough stuff because it just doesn't pop down very easy, but it goes down and then when they lift their foot, when they lift their foot up to step, that pops out and pops any snow out from their shoe. And this is between the, well, let me think here, pieces like this, and the shoe would be like that. I think I should have let Eli explain this because I'm getting at this all backwards. It's just the opposite of what I just said. So what he has to do after he puts, when he's ready to put the, the shoe on, um, he'll actually cut around this pad so there's no extra sticking out. And this is the shoe. This is my winter shoes. This is actually one, an old one. Uh, we have brand new ones to go on and some of the feet will actually be brand new. But this is actually, um, will be, will be ladies shoe. And you can see this is a, called a bar. So this is a bar shoe. And uh, it's just a piece of steel welded in there and that she has had some issues with needing a bar shoe which is a whole nother story we'll talk about that another time but uh, that should work good and you'll see this is all drill techs on the corks and so that helps on glare ice they can walk on glare ice and not slip make it easier to work with. Just while your hands there. And this is the oakum. This is what goes between the pad and the shoe. And Eli's just putting it over the stove here to warm it up a little bit so it's just easier to work. Now a lot of these things that we might be talking about have might have come in actually clearer on some of the other videos. We did two videos of um, Eli's shoeing from last winter and so um, we'll put a card on here to show which videos they are so you could go back and look at those and get, you know, a little bit of a better idea what he does. Did I see you had a flat pads up here? Is these just flats? Mm, no, those are snowballs. Oh, those snowballs too. Yeah, just snowball. Don't you care? Generally have. You had those uh, uh, those ones that you got for me, remember the... Yeah, those degree pads. Were they there? That, that's the one right there. I thought... It's like a flat. Oh, but this is a small degree. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because you said they you, they were going to send these, but they didn't, right? They uh, for my shoes? sent me the wrong size. Yeah. So sent me for like standard breadth. Yeah. So you don't have any regular flat 
flat pads. This one here is a regular oh, yeah. flat pad. Yeah. So why would you use this? That one is like a soft rubber pad for, uh, you know, if a horse is sore footed, it helps if he hits the black top or the pavement, absorb the shot. Okay. That's uh, pretty thick that's too. Pretty good. Yeah, and it's it's a very pliable. Now, do you have to use longer nails? That's another question I remember seeing. Do you have to use longer nails because of the thickness of these pads? No. I Generally, it's, it's, it's the same. Same, yeah. same nails. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got one other question here. These shoes. What in the world do they go on? Racehorse shoes. That is a racehorse shoes? That is a racehorse. Yeah, I want to show people the difference. That is a racehorse shoe. And that's my pulling shoes, just to give you an idea. Now you understand why I like doing race horses better? I do. <laughs> and with this shoe, it's so pliable, you can put on the angle and spread it so easily. Yeah. Most of my shoes don't have the bar shoe on here, so they they have to be spread now and then. And uh, yeah, they're pretty hard to, yeah, to bend. They are. So. Yeah, they are. That's one thing that fork comes in nice. Yes, yes. You know, big hat. So today he's actually got all the shoes with the drill checks already on and all ready to go. So it probably won't take him too long to do this. Now, how do you know that those bars are in the somewhat right spot? As far as if the shoe's shaped right? Well, this, this one shoe I showed has a bar already on it. Yeah. How do you know it's the right width? I don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just hoping. hoping it's on the right, it's the right width. Yeah. Looks pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. Where's good, another good, one? good. There's another one that I think is a little bit wider. So we're just putting the, them on lady, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think by the time we get the pads on, oh, yeah. down, they look good. Bit. Both Lady and Bill were, um, I had reset them not too long ago, and it's actually good in a way, I guess, because it's taken very little trimming to get them ready to put these other shoes on, but they were just slipping so bad in the woods yesterday. I'm so glad that we're getting this done because it's amazing how, how, how much I like my pulling shoes compared to flat shoes. I worked them good and hard yesterday, so if they don't stand, I'll be surprised. <laughs> yeah, get them down and rest the front. Give the straight neck clear out a little bit. Okay. Don't worry, Eli, I can make you look good when I edit it. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> you don't need the hammer flying. No, losing nails, all yeah. that good stuff. That I don't like at all. I'll just do this one shoe and then I'll head on home. But. 
Mm -hmm. That should pretty well cover everything. Got lady. So these are actually the shoes and as you can see there's some uh, little dots right there and then it's flat on the other side and no dots. This tells you how to, which angle to put this, which side to put the shoe on, nail on. So you have to put it in so that the little dots are towards the center of the hoof. Did I say that right? Let me think. Yeah. Yeah, little dots or two. Yeah. The center of the hill. A little, yes. So. Stop, 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 please. So as you can see, he put the nail in and just kind of bent the nail over just to keep I'm sure that's just a habit from keeping, uh, from getting cut on those nails, right? Yeah. More so when it's not quite so dangerous here in these stocks, but if you're holding this hoof up between your legs, you don't want to get, have her pull and then rip your leg. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Screwdriver would work better. Can you find me one hand in the shop? Screwdriver. Oh wait. A little too big for me. Hey, lady, you're fine. Stop. Stop. Cold. So that that outcome is that much stiffer when it's cold? Oh yeah. yeah it just that pine targets. So stiff. Huh. I gotta find a screwdriver. This is not working. Like I'd said earlier, uh, last year we were in a warm, heated shop and he was able to do it in there. I got it. She did not have a lot of room for this, but I'll just... Of course, this bar don't help. Hey, come on, lady, come on. So of the eight shoes that he'll be doing today, only two of them have the bar on, and it does make it more difficult to get the oakum in there underneath the pad. There. That should hold. Good deal. All right. There, ladies, that's so that. So that hoof is done, and I am going to leave it at that, and I'm going to go home and do a few things, and I will be back. When should I come back? Around four o'clock. Okay, I'll be back at four and pick them up.